not really. Mm. Like, there's always a fucking consciousness allotted to the fact that we're sure. being recorded, you know? But it's tea time on the front porch tea time. with yeah, Mama Stasia and we've got Ranger Yoga Jake over here. Stuff tastes like fucking vegan dirt, dude. <laughs> like straight up, it's like, oh, this is what mud tastes like. Yeah. But it's it's classy mud. It's liquid mud. Yeah, it's right. Like it's like re-earthing us. It's right? ancient magical mud. That's right. They used to drink this mud long ago. <laughs> In China, apparently. Mm. Mm-hmm. And who doesn't want to be a little more Chinese? Who? <laughs> <laughs> It's creeping in, whether you like it or not. So you might as well just drink some tea. I also have this spagyric. You should check that out. What's this? So this guy, I know Phoenix Aurelius up in Ogden. He's got this alchemical apothecary workshop, and he brews this stuff up. It's little tinctures, and I think this one's the gift of the Magi. Mm-hmm. So we can put it in the tea. Oh, you're supposed to grind it? You can definitely take it internally, but you can do that too. Do you know, like, what's in it? I mean, the gifts of the Magi, obviously. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe in this one is the frankincense and the myrrh, spagyric. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, Phoenix, if you're watching. Oh <laughs> and um, I think there's an Ormus, too, which would be the gold. So, are you familiar with Ormus? No. So we had to get to an Ormus commercial right now. Oh, Ormus. <laughs> it should be in all your cells and tissues, but it's not. Do you know why? Because they've sucked it out of the soil, apparently. It's depleted, right? But these are consciousness elements. These are elements actually normally found in spring water and like really dope old places where it's like inside the mountain crust and all like, that. Yeah. <laughs> that it actually feeds our consciousness, so it's what causes plants to grow upward, they say, and give everything its upward evolution. So when you consume warmest or consciousness elements, then you become more in attunement with the elements of life. Yeah. Growth. So you want to give it a try? So it's like one of the ayahuasca. <laughs> well, ayahuasca would be high in warmest too, I would. David Wolf talks about Ormus quite a bit. Ricardo Wolf, you know him? I don't know, dude. I can't fucking believe like all that kind of shit. Like Ormus mm. and whatnot, you know? Like I don't doesn't know. believe it. He's an unbeliever. Yeah, there's too many fucking people. Like I don't know, they just fucking sell them all the time too. Too many people for what? Huh? Too many people for what? For me to like believe what Ormus does. Um, well, you can just try it yourself. That's what I always say. I don't believe shit till I try it. <laughs> it doesn't taste bad. It makes the mud better. <laughs> makes the tea taste better? <laughs> it kind of does. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of does. Which I think means you're tasting more facets of the mud and actually mud is probably better than we think it is. <laughs> All right, so here was my idea for this right. talk on the porch today. Is taboo talks, you know, talks that people don't want to have or they're too shy of having. Or, sure. And my theme for today, I was thinking of talking about anxiety because yeah. it seems to be coming up a lot in all my peeps and not sure what to do about this and yeah. in our current establishment we really like to just medicate that yeah. so i just have a, a different take that i wanted to throw at you ranger yogi sure <laughs> well first of all what's your take on anxiety anxiety i mean you ever had that yeah definitely it's like if you fucking experience anxiety and you're like totally lost in the experience and you don't like have a way to fucking get yourself out of it, it can be like totally consuming and like feel like you're fucking dying and just like mm-hmm. like a physiological panic, right? I right. guess. 
Um, <clears throat> they say that anxiety is like writing about negative possibilities in the future. Right? Yeah, that happened a lot. And like, or even good possibilities, right? Like even if you yeah. know, a positive thing, you can freak the fuck out. Just something, but your mind is like lost in like some other fucking moment somewhere else, right? Reading that book, Existential Pink, actually. Ah, Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Elliott. Uh, yeah. She's good. Super she's good. fucking good book. Get it, yeah. dude. Like, I agree. It's pretty, it's really good. It, that, that book honestly could, like, easily replace all fucking yoga teaching. And, I mean, like, <laughs> shadow work it is my go to. Like, it's all, I'm all about it. Like it to me, it makes the most sense. We just have to love every part of us, and that's the thing I want to talk about: anxiety. Yeah. Another take for me on anxiety is actually we're always going through frequency shifts. Like we're vibrational beings, we're always vibrating at a specific rate, but we're actually like sometimes we're vibrating faster depending on who we're around or the scenery. Like an amazing place can make your frequency shift, or a, a thought, a terrible thought, or. A pandemic hitting <laughs> hitting the world or whatever can cause you to have to have a different worldview, right? You have to access actually different brain cells and different mm -hmm. paradigms of reality. So your frequency has to morph and shift to accommodate that. And if you could see us energetically, you would see that we're like stretching and changing colors and stuff, just like an octopus or whatever, to like accommodate a different reality. And so if we realize that what was happening and we can feel that, I'm pretty sure that's the feeling of anxiety because our body is pumping different hormones. It's like trying to get us into a different mindset, but we're resisting because we're like creatures of comfort. We yeah. just want to stay with what we know and like anything that's too far away, we're like, ah, you know, but that ah is actually the progression to the new reality. So it's kind of like, <clears throat> you're in sync, right, in like the moment that you're in, the fucking energy starts like mm -hmm. shifting and kind of causing that discord. I've never thought about it like that. I mean. And, oh. I just lost my thought. I'm allowed to get some more tea over here. <laughs> this is tea. I also love this tea because it's so messy. <laughs> I think I overfilled this one, so Ranger, Yogi, you gotta, you gotta drink some of that. Ooh. Dude, so in that book, <clears throat> right, they, um, there's a few quotes that like really like strike <clears throat> real, um, real good. One of them is like fear and love are basically the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And we kind of talk about that when we're talking about like anxiety and turning like anxiety into excitement. Like, oh my God, I'm really like super afraid of this thing. You gotta figure out how to change it to like, I'm excited about it. But if you take it like to the level that she's going with it, of just like, okay, I'm experiencing anxiety right now. And you like remove yourself from the content of your thing and just think about like what's actually happening in your body. Like, yes, I love like lamenting over possible like tragedies that could occur this is so fun and then it like immediately shifts it into just like laughing at yourself for having mm -hmm. that experience it's pretty cool started doing that like just yesterday uh -huh. and yeah yeah that's pretty good. Good. <laughs> that's good that's good well i mean we can only experience what we have a framework in our mind for experiencing right and we have like this almost like a such a strong groove in our society carved out that anxiety equals a bad experience or like you know you're now removed from the happiness of society you know when you have anxiety but if we carve new grooves like you're saying like this is just a body sensation like feel what your body is feeling during this time make up different scenarios about what that feeling could be for you you know it's just I'm just having a body sensation like I'm just feeling my heart more I'm just feeling my stomach more I'm just feeling like a physical sensation yeah. and get out of your mind, like you're saying, rather than wrapping it around somebody's, you know, preconceived idea of what all of that physiology means, right? Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm thinking like, somebody who's watching this 
and they're like, I have anxiety all the time. What steps you take to reach this level of awareness in your day to day? Like what's number mm. one, you feel anxiety? What do you hear from all this? Um, what do I hear from like all this or what do I hear from like fucking other people about anxiety? Both sides. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I think that like a common thing with uh, like anything relating to consciousness is like you can't pave a road for somebody to like arrive at something. You just kind of have to point them to having the experience and like like remove them from a whole lot of words and explanations of things to just the uh, like abstract that they're able to return to. <clears throat> um, Distilling. Yeah, sort of distilling things, distilling like what's probably going on like this spagyric was distilled. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, society will tell you like a lot of different things about anxiety, right? If you can change your framework around anxiety, um, <clears throat> that's one trick that people use. Like, okay, I'm going to take this exact context and try and see if there's a good thing or. If you are into like the stuff that Mark Manson writes, mm -hmm. you can uh, like define your own metrics or your own uh, values for your life, and then like measure your feelings like based on those. And you would use anxiety as like, if I feel a lot of anxiety, that's actually a good thing because I'm stepping into an unknown like scenario right. and doing all that, <clears throat> right? And there's like a whole bunch of different kinds of systems for like how to. Like, change your mind with anxiety <laughs> we gotta get some it? different camera angles <laughs> yeah so there's a whole lot of different stuff about uh, how to <clears throat> like deal with anxiety in your mind right and all of them are valid to at some point but this is like in that book existential kink that like i think is really great is any kind of anxiety any kind of fear like whatever you're experiencing if you can see things from like the kind of the like a higher perspective yeah see okay. things from a high a more, like a higher consciousness perspective right which is like just looking at which is taking something that you're afraid of and just being like I absolutely love doing this, like the thing that you were doing. I love like feeling tons of anxiety over like whatever bullshit I'm about to go into. <clears throat> like revel in it. Yeah. It's a unique experience. Yeah, if you can learn how to revel in that, then like I have a really cool story. That's about the fastest it. way to like get out of it. Yeah. Okay, here's a story. This is a client of mine. She came to me because she had anxiety and she was like I am, have this anxiety and it's gonna kill me. And I uh, asked her what she did. She said she was a teacher of teens. And she said she couldn't talk to any adults that anytime any other teacher or any parent or anything came around her, she like went into total anxiety panic attack. Mm -hmm. And she was trying, like she, I asked her what she did during this time. And she said she actually had created this really unique program for the teens during this time. And as we reflected, she realized she could never have created that program with the influence of any other adult, that she actually needed to isolate herself just to teens. And so she started to realize that she brilliantly created this anxiety field that disallowed her to connect with any other adults. So she stayed really focused on what she was creating with the teens. Mm -hmm. And she was starting to feel herself coming out of that and wanting to reintegrate and so the anxiety was back and stronger, but she started to identify, wow, this is me like getting ready now to share it and reintegrate what a brilliant person I am, how awesome am I? And at the end, she started doing just what you said. She started to revel in it. She started to be like, this is actually me getting excited to share it. Like this is, wow, like what a powerful thing that I created. Wow. So that was really cool and you just reminded me of that. That we're brilliant. Like, in that book, Carolyn Elliott, she reminds us that we created this reality for ourselves. Like we're co-creating it. We wanted to come and do X, Y, Z. Like imagine us from 
a larger vantage point looking yeah. down and being like, hmm, what experiences do I want to have? Yeah, I want to experience that depth of sorrow. I want to have that crazy thing go wrong. I want, to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then we came to do it. It's almost like we're too scared to do the thing we came to do. You yeah, know? or we're like we cut ourselves off from like <coughs> the divine love of whatever we're experiencing, mm -hmm. right? Like when you go into yoga, they talk a lot about like when you reach that point, I don't even, I don't know any of the yoga terms, but when you like get to the center of yourself and you're just pure consciousness, like it's love, honestly, it's like the thing that existed before everything else existed, right? God existed before demons, pure love and consciousness existed before love. And now here we are on earth and to be able to feel like negative experiences, might be like interesting from that like I am like pure love like sense mm -hmm. of being right right and might be interesting I like that like we, a curiosity like a, okay I'm always this love I'm always this but what if I wasn't for a minute what would that feel like yeah and like <laughs> it's it's a really good thing or a really neat thing to try and call it a kink because like here at this level you can think of yourself like i'll kind of think of myself as like a human sometimes and be like okay this is like my role right fucking now but i do a lot of thinking about like okay like what's kind of the bigger picture of shit even if i don't fucking like it and, right you know what, a, what cosmic player am i <laughs> yeah like what, what fucking bullshit like am i fucking going through like for that purpose right right and um where was I going with this? Yeah, kink. The book is Existential Kink, in case you missed that. But to call it a kink. Yeah, yeah. To, to call it a kink is a really cool thing, you know? Like, <clears throat> the center point of, like, a lot of, uh, like, treatment centers and a lot of other shit is to be able to look at your trauma, like, with love, mm -hmm. you know? And just, like, be able to feel that deep sense of love. And, if and kink know, takes it a little bit further, right? It looks yeah, like, like it, it really, it does. You actually are kind of turned on by this thing, yeah, <laughs> you know? And, I, like, a bigger <laughs> sense. And this is kind of a funny thing too, right? If you think about that, like humans, what we are, right? This is gonna get fucking goofy. Like we are walking sexual energy, like straight up. You exist. Which is kundalini. I mean, that's what that <clears throat> is. It's a life force energy, and it's completely orgasmic. Dude, even well, like even before that, right? Like you exist because some other person had an orgasm in the perfect right spot in that Damn orgasm straight, grew, right there. <laughs> like and it turned into a human, you know? Like yep. your base mm -hmm. fucking existence is like the moment of orgasm, right? right? Like that's what we are as creatures, just like energy, fucking somebody's like leftover orgasm residue that kept having more fucking orgasm. So speaking of Ormus, <laughs> that's tied to this. Do you know who David Hudson is? No. He was like the rediscoverer of the organ field, which is basically the orgasmic field of the universe. Is organ comes from the orgasm term, which is basically the life force elements that are present everywhere. And so, my thought of soil being depleted of ormus is really like us. De we're depleted from our connection to this orgasmic field. Like humans are <laughs> depleted in orgasms. Like, let's be real. Yeah. You know, no, like, for real. yeah. <laughs> like, Every time I have one, I think, this is good for the entire universe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey. Morning, Mom. And speaking of creation, <laughs> this is my child, one of my children. We are having tea and taboo talks. So. What's up, man? <laughs> Woke up, so I don't know. Don't know. Well, we're having some tea, we're having some talks, we're having some tea and talks on the front porch with Mama Stasia. Yeah. So, no dreams to report. We're I know also, I had dreams. We're also recording the talk, so. <laughs> Don't kick over the, the drinks there. It is funny what. Oh, I need water in there again. Man, I'm losing my mind. What the talks will bring in. I was kind of curious. Like, if you were like, talking about dreams and stuff to report, it's like, oh, that's actually like a really neat practice that like, nobody ever does, you know? 
Oh yeah, we like to do that. Man. He has some interesting dreams. He remembers. The fact that he remembers them is a good thing to do too. Yeah, I mean, I'm working on remembering my dreams more. I used to trip out in my dreams so hard and I was becoming really lucid. I think this one's yours. And um, I kind of got freaked out by the lucidity factor and, and started to think, oh my God, if I'm awake in my dreams, I'm gonna be awake all day and I'm never gonna sleep and never gonna get a break from this and I can't do it. Ah! It's like, I went there. <laughs> Jesus. But then I, I grew up a little bit more, I guess, and now I'm like curiously trying to reconnect with that realm more like that. Yes. Can I have a page? Um, mm. Have something else first, like have some fruit, have some, or have it on the cake. We made like a breakfasty cake, right? With some like whipped cream, yogurt, berries, all that, you know, like make it breakfasty, okay? So, all right. Yeah, the second restroom, somebody's taking a shower. Um, yeah, but you have to go downstairs. And, um, are you taking it? Just watch out for my sis who's down there. <laughs> but at the bottom of the stairs, go straight and into the bathroom. Okay. So. We are going to maybe do some clearing next. I'm still drinking some tea. So another part of the work that I do is um, subconscious mind decluttering, field work, I call it, fielding. Um, it's basically tuning into somebody else's life field, which we're getting down to as the orgasmic field, the creation field, and finding all the clutter there that's not, uh, it's not yours, or that's, you know, it's been your story, but it's not your truest divine uh, truth, to use a word twice. So, we'll see if Ranger Yogi Jake wants to do some clearing on uh, film, and I don't know how the. I guess I'm not okay. Can I pause? Oh. All right. Would you shift over here, Ranger Yogi? <laughs> And I was wondering if he would, if we could do some clearing sure, to kind of like see how this works. I don't know how this is all tying together, but. Can you hand me that stack of shittery that I have brought with me? Okay, so I was just explaining of the uh, subconscious mind work that kind of goes along with what we're talking about here. Because yeah. sometimes we're literally carrying the unprocessed anxieties or like misbeliefs of society, ancestry, past life. And um, I love this work because it just sort of brings you your awareness to the level of that bigness of you so that you can like reassess in the moment and choose a new perspective. Is that a good way of saying it? I guess. <laughs> what was your experience since uh, we did this before? Since doing this? Mm -hmm. um, well, the first thing like I noticed was like I went back, I kind of, I was super fucking tired the first day. Mm -hmm. um, the next day, like, I guess I could kind of think a little bit more clearly, and like I found myself doing that biomechanics fucking mm -hmm. divorce bullshit. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Biomechanics. Um, it's just one particular course. There's these, uh, there's this dude, Connor Harris. He put together like some exercises from the postural restoration institute for like kind of correcting the way your pelvis is aligned and your shoulders and your ribs and stuff like that okay. 
<clears throat> uh, I paid for it a long time ago and just like never went through it. Okay. So I kind of found myself doing that and then. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. You do actually seem more out of yourself since the other day. I honestly want to attribute that more to just like this stuff in, from that book. Good. Because like I've been doing it like and it's like oh wow like I actually have like awesome. space in my mind to just like cool be clear. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, and our time working on this stuff before triggered some cool discoveries for myself too in my work. So I appreciate it both ways. Like, it's enlightening, and hopefully you'll find something out of it that's enlightening. So can I tune into you? Sure. Okay, so I'm tuning in. Can I act as proxy for Jay? Okay, gratitude for success of the session. We're still recording. There's some in the other fridge in the garage. Okay, so anything that wants to clear or come up on this body code map. So I'm using Dr. Bradley Nelson's body code, energy pathogen circuit system misalignment, skeletal or soft tissue, uh, kidney or fascial. So the first thing is a fascial misalignment. And is it upper or lower body? Is it hips? So hips, pelvis. I always feel like if other people are witnessing, then there's relevance for their own life. So I'll just take that. Okay. And is there an associated imbalance to this misalignment? Yes. Is it an energy, a pathogen, a circuit or system? Circuit or system. An organ, a gland, or a system. So I've got a system. A humanitary, circulatory, urinary, digestive, skeletal, endocrine, muscular, immune system, and lymphatic. Lymph nodes, bone marrow, thymus, liver, tonsil, spleen, Peyer's patches. I actually don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. Pyers patches. Maybe you know, but let's see if it, that's the root cause or is there an associated imbalance. So we actually don't really have to know. So is it energy pathogen, circuit system misalignment, skeletal misalignment? So cranial or vertebrae. And do we have to know where it is? Okay, there's still an associated imbalance. So it's kind of showing all of the spine. Energy pathogen, circuit system, misalignment, toxin. Heavy metal, biological food or drug toxin. Um, is it pharmaceutical or recreational? Is it depression, stimulant, or hallucinogen? I've heard a bunch of these out of me too. <laughs> um, it's not marijuana. Ecstasy. So this one tends to stay in the vertebrae. I also clear this for myself. So is there associated imbalance? No. So then we just move to clear this toxin from the system and ask the body to remove it through its normal elimination channels. Since I'm connected, I'll do the same. And is that, is the drug toxin still present? Okay, is there still a vertebrae misalignment? Is there still Peyer's patch? Is there still a fascial misalignment? So that was just one thing that cleared out. Is there anything else that wants to clear or reset? An energy or a pathogen? A fungal mold, a virus, bacteria, parasite? And again, it doesn't necessarily mean it's physical. Is there an associated imbalance in energy? So is it emotional or trauma, an allergy, or an offensive energy? So offensive energy, is it saboteur or an entity? So entities show up like parasites a lot. Is there an associated imbalance? No. Okay, so to remove an entity, there is three ways usually that work. So one is just, we just start by it commanding the removal of this entity from Jake and sending it to a white light. Let's see if that works. So did that work to clear this entity? No. 
So sometimes we have to use a command and use a name, like in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Ascended Masters, in the name of my highest, infinite Father, Mother, God, Self, in the name of the Christ, I command this entity to depart, never to return again, and that entity clear. So it did clear, um, and then is there still parasite energy now? Okay, so that one's gone. Is there anything else that wants to clear or come back into balance? Yes, energy pathogen, circuit system, misalignment, toxin, nutrition, or lifestyle. You can just check different parts of the energy. Nutrition, adjunctive therapy, lifestyle, physical needs, sleep, energy, medicine, outside needs, magnetic field. So sometimes we have a magnetic field deficiency. So does Ranger Jake have a, a magnetic field deficiency? Okay, so then is there an associated imbalance? So something is causing that. This is so I don't forget, I gotta write everything down. Okay, is it an energy pathogen, a circular system, an organic gland, or a system? A hematory, circulatory, urinary, digestive, skeletal, endocrine, muscular, immune, respiratory, nervous system. Central, peripheral, okay. Peripheral, somatic or autonomic. Sympathetic, enteric or parasympathetic. So parasympathetic, nervous system, imbalance. That's the part of you that helps you go to sleep and relax, right? Yeah. So associated imbalance, no. So then that one just wants to reset. So we're intending to reset the parasympathetic nervous system. So we're using a magnet and we're running the governing meridian, which is here all the way down the spine. Although this is generally sufficient. So did that reset the parasympathetic nervous system for Jake? Okay, is there still a magnetic field deficiency? No. Okay, so that one worked too. And is there anything else that needs to be reset or cleared? That's all that wants to happen. So At this moment. Dude, I'm wondering about this magnet stuff, right? Because, like, <clears throat> so if humans have, like, a biomagnetic field that we can, like, mm -hmm. somehow measure in different ways, <clears throat> right? I have had moments where, like, I'll have my phone on in my room or just be, like, around electronics for any amount of time and, like, like feel sensations in my body, right? Like, hmm. I always short out my car's electrical systems. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had anything like that. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool and terrible. It's not cool because <laughs> I always have stuff going on. My last car, I had to like jump start it or unplug the battery every day because it would just fry out. And it's almost like the same issue happens with every car. Yeah. So right now, for this car, it's just that lights go on and off on the dashboard. But yeah, we do affect stuff. I mean, like, I wonder if this magnet stuff, dude, if you were to hold a magnet and like think stuff if that would like be able to make like a measurable change you know and some kind of measurement so that makes me think of a couple things so i sleep on a magnet bed right now i've been doing that because of this pain in my body like i've had this nervous thing on one side and it actually really helps and if i don't sleep on the magnet bed then it's it comes back so i'm definitely working with my magnetic field but that also makes me think of this experiment I used to date this scientist and he was trying to look for alternative sources of energy and we were testing um, piezoelectric crystals and like our attraction to each other <laughs> so we were like measuring he had the thing with two magnets and like a tester reader thing and we would like get closer to each other and like talk sweet to each other and kiss and the energy would go Inflection up uh -huh. and we were kind of freaking out about it because we were like yeah. this is legit like this is real stuff but there's no studies on this <laughs> and um that relationship didn't last very long unfortunately <laughs> but we get we did get to that point where we recognized that the magnetic field of two people did create an energy field yeah. and that's pretty cool that is pretty cool but it also makes you think like 
if you're not in alignment with someone and you're connecting magnetic electric fields, like oh, you're having yeah, an intimate yeah. relationship, that you there can be like some damaging energy that's created yeah, too. Sure. Like you can really like, mess with each other's. That's definitely a thing, dude. Like if you fucking mm -hmm. get with somebody who just like like it's a bad relationship, like you can definitely leave them. Like, yeah, and I think it can really like mess with your like dharma. It can mess with your path because you suddenly like I do feel like you exchange like karmic imprints, mm -hmm. like you almost like give each other stuff that you later can realize this is not my stuff. This yeah. is like somebody <clears throat> else's stuff that I like downloaded into my energetic grid into yeah, my yeah. magnetic field, like yeah. a computer, you know. And if you don't want to think about it, like in like karmic terms or just like karmic energy like a really abstract thing <clears throat> that somebody can throw out there think about it like this dude like if you're just like i don't know what is that word that they use on um, like secondhand trauma or something okay. like mm -hmm. basically like if <clears throat> kids are having like a really shitty time at home they come to school and like they tell their teachers and shit about it like their teachers can like kind of get emotional uh not like fucking like real trauma, you know, from it, but just like hearing yeah. about that is kind of like, oh fuck, like that sucks. It can leave like mm -hmm. a negative imprint on you. In the same way, dude, like uh, me with relationships, there was this fucking girl who was like, I thought it was like the most amazing thing in the fucking world, and then just like, <clears throat> I was in a place where I got myself into like a state of mind where I was like, having fucking anxiety and panic attacks all the time, and, like all sorts of fucking weird shit that just like, it never fucking happened to me before. <clears throat> I didn't know really how to deal with it. Hmm. Maybe you're um, going through a frequency shift. No, uh, maybe just like a, being in a fucking horrible like place where like mm. I, my soul died basically, and then. Mm. Uh, so I wonder like, why you say that. So I got this like girl's attention, right? And she like kept trying to fucking come and talk to me, and like I would seriously have like fucking panic attacks at this huh. shit. It's like fucking retarded, and I like. I kind of wonder if, like... It could have been trying to deter you, right? Like energy. Well, like, me fucking deterring her, right? But, like, I think that doing that to, like, her and, honestly, a couple other fucking girls was, like... I think that that caused, like, a, uh... Was, like, hardcore rejection, basically, that they fucking suffered, that, like, fucking pissed them off. And it wasn't something that I intended to do. It was just kind of, like, this, like, pain and fucking, like depression that I carry with me and I think that it like kind of reflected like my bullshit onto them so in thinking about like changing your fucking karma or your like your dharma how you might like affect other people either like call it energy or whatever but like, that's what it that's what it might look like like in a very real context in my some shit like that. Yeah. Here's my theory about relationships and what they're meant to do because individually, well, and I use a lot of like yoga language because that's my studies, but uh, an individual level, I think our spiritual weight awakening is like a second puberty yeah. <laughs> because we go through all these hormonal changes in order to awaken and bring that orgasmic kundalini like life force energy like more awareness into the body more access to this electromagnetic field like greater capacity for our humanness and when we meet with other people and I actually think this is supposed like this is how relationships work is we attract somebody who can help trigger a release of whatever is in the way of that development like we actually are looking for people to help move blocks in us so we attract someone in who can hit us right at our wound like yeah. hit our wound and then our wound like spews out and either that person's like in it for the battle because they have one too and they're going to go ahead and move stuff also or that's all their job was and they just go great and, that's and that, yeah, yeah then they're gone for, yeah honestly i think that for me like this girl like that so many fucking reasons for me to like like her but like honestly i think that that was kind of the purpose yeah. was like having her in my life would like have fucking undone some like mm -hmm. kind of bullshit from the past but instead of like just going with it and being like okay let's fucking like 
heal this shit. Right. It was like, I have this shit and I don't want to like, mm-hmm. like I need you to stay away from me. <laughs> and then, Yeah, a lot of people go through that. Like, I do the same thing sometimes. Yeah, having done that, it's like, kind of became the battle of like, okay, either I can get rid of this and we can both like move up to her level or I can hold on to this and she can fucking come down to my level. Mm-hmm. So I th- honestly think that that's what happened. I have no idea, but. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it sounds familiar just to me in a recent relationship because he was working through a lot of self-hatred stuff and I like he wanted to move and be in a healing space with me but what ended up happening is me like trying to help him work through all his stuff and it, after a while it really like depleted me energetically and I was like that's all I can do and I release you and yeah I mean both people have to be wanting to heal and and um, own their stuff you know and it's hard when you have like a I want to say like a self-rejection spiral or a self-worth spiral yeah. and sometimes we have to go into that you know and like that's yeah. another top of depression that's fucking, like, <laughs> like another avoid that bullshit like at all costs dude if that shit ever fucking happens to you and you, you mean depression yeah, like, well, I mean, fucking depression, but, like, the spirals that you just fucking oh. mentioned. Like, if that shit starts fucking happening, dude, you gotta, like, kill it as a... Find, like, have a way to kill it or some kind of practice that's well, able to, like, help you come out of it. Okay, this is we're going into another mm-hmm. front porch talk with Mama Stasia. <laughs> <laughs> we breached the depression conversation because depression is also, like, it's sucking you down to almost, like, it's a death process. And it's making you go into like a big release, like in the tarot, it would be the tower, the tower card where you're just like completely crumbling an existing you, like an existing you, like you go through um, like a destructuring and it's actually part of an awakening journey to destructure a previous self and it hurts and it's like not fun. And I'm not saying like you should love it, but I am saying it's uh, useful if you're going there and you have the bravery to to go there you you have to go out the bottom like and i'm not saying kill yourself i'm saying kill your old identity like let that crumble away because a new you is trying to be born and depression is like an initiatory pathway to that and that we're we are out of initiatory rights in this culture like we don't do initiation rights like even marriage anymore has become like a very different uh, scenario or or ceremony. It's like people aren't really in the initiation. I'm not saying everybody, some people do. But like initiatory right is is a rite of passage that's in all native cultures. And it's still in the East and a lot of like the traditions in India and so forth. Where like at certain ages, you go through a ceremony of initiation and some of those include some kind of a death practice which is either like a young boy going and shooting a deer in the forest and like having to fend for himself on a vision quest or something or like very advanced yogis will do like a a rite of the sepulchre or a death passage where they like simulate a death either in a cemetery or like some other place where you have to face the fear of death and then re rebirth yourself like face your fears basically and and release the part of you that is you know trepidous of going forward it's kind of what like ayahuasca or like if you have like kind of death with mushrooms it's all basically the same thing like there's you that you think of yourself as and if you're <clears throat> that's not like in alignment with like who you are you know like you do have to find a way to let that part of you die or just like deliberately fucking kill it and be like okay well something new is fucking going on and i really think that's what depression is trying to trigger for sure so if you're watching and you experience depression definitely reach out for a support system but also to begin to look at it and i'm not advocating anything to do with any self-harm at all I'm specifically speaking about um, a mental shift and a release of who you thought you were you know like if I grew up and I did you know very church-going girl 
and um, my identity was tied to that, tied to my um, religion and tied to how I thought of myself in that way, I actually have gone through a myriad of these uh, personality deaths, if you will, where the person that I thought that I was wasn't there anymore and it did send me into depression because I didn't know who I was going to be. I just knew I wasn't that me anymore and some of the ceremonies that I've given myself have been like a, a name change ceremony because I just didn't feel connected to the name that I was anymore and so I <clears throat> did like a rebirthing ceremony and there's lots of people that do these sorts of things uh, maybe you've heard of like soul retrievals or rebirthing um, but that's what that's based on is to is to allow, uh, and even a sweat lodge is a simulated um, death and rebirth. Have you done sweat lodges before? No, but I like sitting in the sauna. Yeah, I mean, that's like the original purpose, ooh, careful, oh. of the sweat lodge is like, you're simulating going into a womb space and like being reborn, it's dark and it's, it's like, almost like suffocating <laughs> and like the steam keeps coming in it's a purification and when you crawl back out of the womb it's like you're rebirthing yourself you've let whatever was your old persona that you're not feeling anymore and you're not tied to but you don't know what the new is you're letting it like melt away or slough off or <clears throat> and I was just mentioning while you're gone that you know I grew up very religious in this you know religious family and when I got to a certain part in my early 20s where I was like oh my gosh this is not me I don't even feel like this person at all anymore that I gave myself a renaming ceremony and gave myself a new name yeah. and um, went through a whole like rebirthing like simulating a birth for myself on a specific like astrological date and everything and that ceremony like what that ceremony does is it literally helps your psychology reset like initiatory rites are super important in helping us like that's why we go to funerals when someone dies so we can cope with and close the door on that relationship or have a wake. yeah or have a wake like something that's like an initiatory right that tells your brain this cycle's over there's a new one you know and that's something we're missing i think in this culture it's like yeah. important rites of passage and depression, I think, is a really great example of something that could be seen as the beginning of what could be like a really powerful initiatory, right? Yeah, there's a lot of people that talk about that too. There's that book, um, The Divine CEO by oh. Job Thompson. I don't know that one. Yeah. Also, The Care of the Soul by Thomas More. Mm. Like, he talks a lot about these difficult emotions and how like, transformational they could be. Yeah. It's a good one, also. He, uh, in that book, The Divine CEO, he usually goes, or he's got a chapter in there called, like, The Ball is the Call. It's like, if your life is kind of just, like, absolutely shitty and fuck, fucking falling apart, basically, it's kind of your time to connect with the divine. <clears throat> and, the fall is the fall. Yeah. yeah. Move on with your life and, like, kind of discover your own personal dharma, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, the old reality is crumbling. That's a sign. I like listening to that, yeah. dude. Or I like that dude's book. Uh, just because one, he's got a really fucking interesting story. Um, he was, like, as a kid, he was into martial arts, and then I guess, like, he was uh, either, like, raped or something happened, like, at the hands of one of his teachers, and it, like, kind of fucked him up. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> he got really into doing martial arts and wanted to go and, like, test himself because he still felt, like, afraid. So he worked as a doorman or a bouncer, like, in mm -hmm. England and, like, back in the 1980s when, like, there wasn't cameras and shit like that. Right. <laughs> so, like, he was getting into, like, a couple fights, like, every single day for fucking years and just, like, he's been in thousands of fights and he's just, like, a badass dude. <laughs> he can do Whoa. all this crazy <laughs> shit. That's yeah. crazy. And uh, <clears throat> he eventually got into, like, spiritual study. And mm -hmm. as far as I can tell, like, I'm pretty sure this is true, but whatever, it seems like uh, he's read, like, every spiritual text on Earth. Mm -hmm just found <clears throat> little bits of all of them and kind of pieced them together. And he references like different things in yeah. like each uh, religion about yeah. it. And does a really good job of like, you need to get back on like the path, mm -hmm. you know? And, yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool, stuff. cool. What was his name again? Job Thompson. Job Thompson, I don't think I've read anything. 
by him. <clears throat> cool. So yeah, fuck depression, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, <clears throat> yes, but also, you know, you could say fuck funerals too, but like, yeah, you could there's, say, I guess fuck the new birth, right? Like, it's yeah, I mean, it like hurts. Change, but like, I mean, some of the places where I've been the most depressed in my life, like right after that was the biggest shifts that I had, like the biggest transformations. And for my son, I have a teenage son. He experienced a lot of depression earlier in his teenage life. And my, I was always like encouraging that there was something he was exploring in himself. And he like really dove into writing and had become like an amazing writer. And he used a lot of his really like dark, feelings that he had to produce some fucking incredible pieces of work where I'm just like, whoa. Okay, I thought I was a good writer before and I've kind of like put my pen down for a minute and been like, I think the torch has passed. <laughs> you know, like he has just really like exploded in his love of writing and he's like in clubs and stuff and he wants to be a famous author or whatever. But he like that those depression times, like that was his initiatory right into being a great writer. And one of my closest friends her husband was always in like these deep dark places and my encouragement to them was always like I'm pretty sure he's a freaking amazing musician because that's what I can see from out here and if you just let him and so he ended up like building this like dark cave and started doing his music down there and like amazing like he would go into these bouts of like three and four day depressions and then he would come back with like this incredible music because it was supported, like the process became supported. Huh. And I, I, I think that's what's missing. I think like all the depressed people, and if you're listening and you have those moments, like those are your creative, like birthing moments. And just like birth of a baby, which is a very dark and scary place. <laughs> and it can be wonderful too, but it's also freaky. And it's the closest to death that you become uh, like as a woman. Um, you like literally go and you like, partially die and bring back this person and it's kind of true too I mean it's totally true with depression and the creative process like a part of you is dying and that's what you're mourning like that's what you're feeling is sorry but this facade of you isn't the truth like there's something deeper that's brilliance that's coming out mm. yeah. I don't know well that's my take for me, like, I never treated depression that way. I've always found, like, <clears throat> when... Yeah, I mean, most don't even think to. I found that when I've been depressed, like, some kind of a creative outlet was, like, definitely the, uh, like, the medicine for it. <clears throat> um, yeah. My experience with depression, for the most part, has just been, like, I get depressed, and then, like, once I get there, it's like your mind becomes cemented, and you can't fucking think very far ahead, and you just, like... It's like your fucking soul has left your body and you're just left with like an empty fucking shell of like uh, brain doing what it can to like survive, but there's no like reason for anything. And all of it just turns awful. So you know the story in Egypt of the river Styx and like crossing over to the underworld. Like when you said that, that's what I thought of as like your soul literally going to like get another part of you and you're like, you're just holding the space for a minute while that happens. <laughs> Because maybe that is what happens. Because there is a feeling in depression, right, that you're completely hollow and empty, and, like it's pointless, right? Yeah, it's fucking like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels terrible. It feels terrible. I, I've been there too. And in that moment, you think it's pointless and you think there's no reason for it. But what if a part of you could always remember this conversation? Like, what if you are crossing your soul over to the other side and finding some purpose and bringing it back? And like, this is what your body has to do in the meantime, like stay animate. And like that, the creative arts are great for that because you don't require that mind in that space. Yeah, if we had like some kind of a center where it's like, hey, do you have depression? Don't worry, come in here and we'll just like, give you like tons of playtime with like creative fucking like bullshit like, well in india like, that's what an <laughs> ashram and so so getting back to like a spiritual awakening like depression is the dark night of the soul like in spiritual terms or in like the tarot the tower the tower moment is like the dark night of the soul is depression like that's the place where you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and you can't 
you know, nothing makes any sense. But like in India and knowing that that's what a Kundalini awakening looks like, that's what spiritual awakening and you just happen to be at the second chakra at the gateway of the ancestors, you know, which is what that's also called during that process. And yeah, this is part of it. And we know you can't function in society. So we made an ashram for you and we cook for you. And all you have to do is do karma yoga to stay here. Like that is the idea of the ashram. Like, and they're all over India for that exact reason. That's a good idea. Like, yeah. And I mean, we don't have that here. Like, wake up you become homeless if you're going like, through that, you know, be on fucking Netflix all day and do all your fucking silly American bullshit. Like, yeah. Or you just can't like you end up on the corner. You know, yeah. because there, there's no acceptance of that phase of your, you know, evolutionary journey. Yeah. Or self-realization or awakening, you feel like. Um, you, also gotta, you also gotta use, like, depression, like, as a fucking signpost, dude. If you're depressed in life and you're not acknowledging that that means that there's something fucking wrong, like, you're fucked up, dude. Like, <laughs> like I feel like, for me, and like, trying to figure out my path, it's really hard to, like, get on the right path at any given moment and like tell when I'm doing shit right but there's definitely like a sensor for when shit's wrong it's not going to tell you what's wrong or at exactly, least like stuff's like, changing right like it's changing like you're no longer in the alignment and you're moving toward alignment but now you have to take mm. this like side path with that's the detour well like that's what my experience is that uh, I never have is like if I just become depressed and then nothing fucking changes you right know? if you like, just do in it and stay in it yeah or i was in a it's situation. like the strata of depression because you could go all the way down and then come back up but most people are like that's even what the medications and stuff kind of keep you at they don't bring you back up into i mean for most people some people it does yeah. um and I'm not being a doctor or prescribing or <laughs> deterring from any like, medications, even, but. I'm not even gonna have that fucking like talk. Of no, I'm, but, <laughs> but the strata of depression is that unmovable place, right? And there is a, I think, an acceptable amount of time for that if you really surrender to it. But the problem, I think, is not surrendering to it, like partially wanting to get out of it. And partially feeling paralyzed right so that place is like that's where I think this mindset can come in and say if there's a purpose for that then let's get to it already like let me just fall into this all the way yeah <clears throat> but like if something is fucking like impeding you from like it, well, you yeah. might not have a space to do that. I mean, you might not have a space to do that. And, like, a, there's a whole bunch of fucking other reasons that, like, <clears throat> you can become depressed. And, like, it's a fucking, like, a, uh, what do you call it? You know, <laughs> like, quicksand kind of fucking trap, dude. Like, once you're in, like, you're also just kind of fucking stuck, you know? Like, well, again, like, mindset tricks like if if you're depressed because a relationship didn't work out for example like you need to just cry your eyes out oh, <laughs> to dude, the floor no. sometimes I, you I know i call that sadness dude because there's like a difference between like deep sadness where like okay i'm just like really fucking sad about something versus like not fucking feeling anything true you know I mean? true true <laughs> like, true but someone can get depressed from a relationship because they have a continuous pattern that's going on and it's just like an underlying like never going away sadness but you never like fully get in there and acknowledge that you feel like complete failure in every sense of the way like you you just never let yourself go to the bottom mm -hmm. like the bot i mean admitting for a moment that part of humanness sometimes is feeling like so worthless that that's also part of like the flip side of that is knowing your worth right and worthlessness, that doesn't mean that you should extinguish your life at all. Like it's just acknowledging like on the one spectrum, someone can feel self-worth and on the other, you can literally feel the essence of, I am nothing, like I am the biggest piece of shit or I am so worth like being in that place and just giving it to yourself, like going back to Carolyn's book, like maybe that's part of what you wanted to experience when you came here is if you know you're everything, why wouldn't you sometime wanted to feel like nothing? So the way to get out of that, guys, is if you can, like, fucking <clears throat> get to the, well, maybe it might work, I don't know, but if you use the tricks in that fucking book of just, like, looking at your experience and all the pain that you're having as, like, some kind of, like, 
higher fucking being perspective <clears throat> of like an existential kink like fuck yeah I love like making myself depressed and just like stewing about stupid bullshit and like actually feeling like that like hardcore uh, like blissful orgasmic energy towards that mm -hmm. right you're kind of reuniting <clears throat> the bliss of connection with the divine to the current experience that you're having and in that yes. way you're like enabling your soul which is this Oof. awesome blissful feeling <clears throat> to like be there and then just start fucking doing its thing and then like okay cool once you've like reunited the blissful feeling to that you're now back in the blissful feeling and you're totally about doing whatever the fuck you want i love this and just to use like buzzwords that people are familiar with like this is light work guys like bringing the light of awareness and bliss into the darkest places that's what a light worker is supposed to do like that's also shadow work because you're going into the shadows of yourself and bringing love like they're both the same idea you're going to the hard places and then you're lighting it up I like, like, when they talk about fucking shadow work, there's a whole lot of experiences that I've had that kind of, like, the way that she puts this stuff, or the way that she words this stuff is really, like, yeah, got it, <clears throat> right? Because she's a psychologist, and she's using well, that lingo, maybe? Uh, not quite. Like, no? for me, if I do meta, like, if I mm -hmm. go into meditative states and whatnot, and, like, I'm... Like, there's meditation, and there's, like, different levels of meditation that you can get into. Mm -hmm. If you are into like the law of attraction and manifestation and stuff you should honestly read that like cia document about their uh, like project stargate the cia created like a psychic spies program and all yeah. this different shit so they have like certain meditations that you can kind of do and if you go into them and you do them right you'll start having kind of different like experiences in your meditations and be able to tell like okay i was kind of like in this I guess realm of like dimension and existence, <laughs> right? Uh huh. Um, <clears throat> started having out of body experiences and like weird shit like that. Uh, for me, this gets me into a whole other topic. There's there's like always kind of two. Um, like if I fell asleep, it seems like there's two world materials that are going on. There's like the light side dark side right and right. Like I'll try to do meditation to like I connect with like I don't know like okay. some dark spot within myself or try to communicate like with my unconscious and shit like that and I can kind of shift between these two worlds there's like this black mass of shit it's like a 3d thing but it's like pure black when I'm looking at it right and then if I'm like actually engaging with it uh, like it's like made out of shadow and it just kind of behaves and like thinks and responds to like thoughts mm -hmm. differently. Whereas, it is like a shadow. <clears throat> whereas um, like my conscious thoughts will be something totally different. I kind of respond the way that I'm used to them. And just in that way, I like to ca uh, categorize like the ego versus like the unconscious. Um, so in doing like this dark or the uh, shadow work, right? It's like any old memories or like any sensations, traumas, or just even fucking your emotions, right, come up in like this shadow thing and then like mm -hmm. my mind, I guess, like your upper fucking chakra uh, is like the light of consciousness observing it and these two things are just like have fucking at it with each other and like what the fuck is going on here and <clears throat> like upon the what she does in her book where it's like anything that is presented or like any experience that you have if you're if i'm able to like go into it just with this like fuck yeah i'm absolutely all for like whatever the fuck i'm feeling right uh yeah it causes an integration yeah it, too. it, it mm -hmm. fucking bridges the gap it right? does and it allows yeah. like the what i like experience from from this like light area within my brain to the dark side, it like it makes them flow better. A way that this mm -hmm. might come out like in dreams is like I'll have dreams, and if I'm above land, then I guess like that's my conscious mind. If you're underwater, that's your unconscious. Mm -hmm. Virtually any time, like I'm, I'll find places where like I go into a cave or go wherever, mm -hmm. and then I'll look into the water, and there will be like sea creatures and shit in there. Mm -hmm. And depending on like what I'm going through in my life at that time, it could be like some kind of a crazy like fucking 
like a kraken or some shit and i'm just like oh my god i don't want to fucking go in there at all versus like a fucking dolphin coming and just like kind of hanging out and like trying right. to talk to me yeah, yeah for me they're always like dangerous animals that like i'm scared to get in the water with and i tried this thing one time and those are the monsters in the mind <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> exactly and uh i tried this thing one time where like i went into the water and like i deliberately thought like anything that can happen is the best thing that could ever happen just one tool so i was yeah, trying I like to that. use uh and this mm -hmm. like fucking shark swimming at me like turned into like a whale that was kind of passing mm -hmm. by and i could just like i was sitting here floating with all these like cool creatures and they're all talking to each other and shit mm -hmm. but like there was peace there i was like huh all the, right this reminds me <laughs> of something one of my teachers told me one time she used to use the word petty tyrant so she'd be like, we always require a petty tyrant um, because like every situation is an alchemical experience, she would say. And she'd say, in order to up level any experience, you have to have both elements. You can't just have light. You have to have like an, an opposite polarity because it takes both to be a whole to go to the next level. So if every situation you're in, you identify the petty tyrant and you recognize why they're there, then you can be like, awesome, you're here. Yeah. That means we can do this. And then you go to the next level and it becomes more automatic, like the faster you can turn the shark into the you know, butterfly or whatever. Like, yeah. oh, I love you, you're amazing. Mm -hmm. Like it shifts, right? Yeah, I was fucking doing that this morning, like, awesome. uh, turns out my fucking car registration is expired by a lot, so I have to go get that fixed, right? That's amazing! You can go <laughs> interact with the people at the registration <laughs> place, and yeah, you get called in there, your essence um, is needed. <laughs> so I always think, oh, I must be needed at the DMV today. <laughs> yeah, the doctors are requiring my presence. But like, uh, I kept like thinking like, okay, like, <clears throat> like I start getting like anxious thoughts and thinking like, okay, well, if a cop fucking pulls me over, like I start reviewing that situation in my own mind. Like, yes, hi officer. I discovered that my registration is expired just two days ago. I totally forgot for the past seven months. <laughs> right? like, <laughs> Like, I've been depressed. I haven't gone out of my house. This is the first day. Yeah, it's, it's one of those stupid things that, like, you just fucking yeah. forget. Like, I fucking hate right. cars. Like, I hate the fact that a car fucking exists, honestly. And I'm fucking, like, having but to But we are grateful up. that you could get here today for the talks on the front porch. I'm ungrateful that, like, our fucking world requires driving places. You know, like, it's fucking dumb. But Well, yeah, we're definitely in a transformation period where we recognize the outdated structures and we are starting to envision a new world and that's an exciting and weird place to be too yeah so my uh my thought was like reviewing like what would happen if a fucking cop comes and pulls me <laughs> over and i'm sitting here like okay i'm fucking feeling anxious about this how can i make myself like love this experience like right. yeah you know i can't wait to talk to the cop that doesn't make any sense but if i think about it like what i'm actually doing is like okay i'm sitting here stewing about like possible negative situations and just being like fuck yeah i love doing this to my brain until it like feels weird that i'm even saying it and then it's like huh i can't believe i was doing that that was interesting and then like it freed up all my fucking like mind space to fucking think about other shit and i was like oh all right that worked magically in a better mood I'm like, huh. i was also thinking like that sensation you know when a cop is talking to you and you get like heightened body sensation you know because you're just like what's gonna happen what if it's just for that sensation that you were going out, like you were looking for that, almost like it's a high to have that experience. Yeah, right. right. And then you're like, oh, I'm trying to get that way. So then I'm just going to bring myself into that feeling anyway, because that's kind of like what it invokes, right? Like we like body sensations. We, all, we like to heighten our body sensations. So sometimes we'll invent different ways to get there right? yeah and the fact that like your conscious mind but might fucking hate the experience that you're having right now there's some fucking part of you that's not up here it's probably like back here somewhere that's just like fuck yeah dude this is important shit and if right. you just like embrace it that's yeah, reveling totally here it. with it mm -hmm. i fucking love it then mm -hmm. either it'll fucking change into <clears throat> like the natural bliss that is like spiritual enlightenment or it makes me think shit. of do you ever have the feeling where you're watching someone else be uncomfortable and you like it 
I know that seems a little distorted, but sometimes you're like, oh, they need to have this experience, and they're super uncomfortable, there's like this is actually good for them. There's people that have, like, wished pain upon them, for sure, you know, <laughs> like, you are such a fucking, like, twat. Well, let's say, <laughs> like, in a, in a positive sense, like, watching another woman go through a pregnancy or birth, and they're, like, expressing their discomforts, but you, like, know what's coming after for them, so you're, like, kind of, like, happy they're having it, yeah. or, like, you know, like, different experiences where you're, like, I know this is uncomfortable, but you're going to like it, like, like for me, sending my kids to their, you know, something that they're uncomfortable, Tasia's first day at call or at high school or whatever, and he's a little nervous, and I'm thinking this is good, like he's going and it's good for him. And like if we can have that same thought of ourselves, like oh you're uncomfortable right now, like this yeah. is good for you, you love it, like don't you love it? <laughs> like now I'm like starting to do that, and it's great. And if you like really do like work with <clears throat> like Mark Manson's like med picking like your explicit values and like measuring your life like only by those values. Also Demartini um, does value rating. You can do a free uh, value test on his site too. John Martini. <laughs> cool, Mark Hansen. Um, a lot of people don't know what their values are. Yeah, I mean to know that you just have to look at how you're spending your day. Like oh, my value clearly is just like sitting here and playing video games Bingo. all fucking day. And just be like honest with yourself. Yeah. You know? Like, well, I value this time that I have to myself. Right, and like you think that, like, yeah, man, I value discipline and working out. It's like, well, but you don't but you work don't out. Do it. <laughs> you still have this idea of yourself that you do that, but you're not actually doing so it. So first, just get real. Like, look at what you really do. Yeah, I do. do. Like, take an yeah. honest look at shit. Um, with that, like, the uh, looking at people and thinking, like, oh, yeah, I like your uncomfortable, like, thing that you're going through because I know it's on the other end of it. I kind of do that with my, like, nephew sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. I'll hang out with him, and, like, uh, he'll, like, <clears throat> by the time I was his age, like, eight years old, honestly, like, I had cut, like, every single one of my fingers probably, like, ten times already, because, like, I love playing with knives and just, like, doing stupid shit. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, like, he's actually, like, pretty well protected, which is good. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying it was, like, a good thing for yeah, me, sure. necessarily. But it also just made me, like, not care, like, Mm -hmm. If I'm bleeding, like, oh, okay, whoops, you know, not a big deal. Right. But he's over here, like, kind of freaking out and whatnot. <clears throat> so I'll try to tell him stuff, like, he, uh, like, he really likes the Spartan fucking um, Assassin's Creed game, or the ones oh. about, like, ancient Greece or something. Interesting. Okay. And he's like, yeah, Spartans are, like, the, be the, like, the best warriors ever. I'm like, yeah, that's so cool. And anytime like, he's going through something, I'm like, man, this hurts, or, like, this really sucks. I'm like, it's Sparta training, dude. Just, like, yes. if it hurts, man, like, yes. you got to be able to, training. like, endure pain and just, like, right. whatever. So, like, anytime, like, he gets a boo-boo, it's just, like, Sparta training, dude. It's not a big deal. Yes. It's like, yeah, okay. I'm like, yeah, good job, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, that yeah. reminds me of a time my son uh, went camping for his first time with his dad, who's not very in his life. And his dad wasn't very prepared for the camping trip, and so he had kind of a traumatic camping trip, and they didn't really have any food, and they had to fish for their food, and it was like, got wind stormy, and sand was blowing, and he couldn't sleep, That's and he missed me, and he was sad, and he was like, kind of like, when, he, when I came to pick him up, because they had no car, you know, I dropped him off, and so I came to pick him up, and he was like, <laughs> and I was like, wow, you went through like the coolest wilderness initiation, like you're a warrior, like this is what warriors go through, you had to, yeah, you know, and you I, got free frame of yeah I explained the vision quest, and then he was like, yeah, I yeah, did it. I want to go do it again. Right. And so, out the woods. <laughs> yeah, so it's really the framework that we have to work on. Again, yeah. coming back to that. So it has been awesome having these talks with you, Yogi Ranger Jake. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time for Tea Time on the Porch with Mama Stacia. <laughs> <laughs> All right.